In this video, we will find the relativistic expression of mass, that is the velocity dependence of mass. So, first of all, consider a stationary frame like this. Okay. And it has the coordinates like x, y, and z. And this is the frame, stationary frame. So, we take it as S frame. Now, consider another frame which have a translational motion along x axis with respect to this S frame. So, that is another frame that is S prime frame. We take this and it has a motion with velocity v along x axis. Okay. And the coordinates of this frame is x prime z prime and y prime okay now consider two particles in s prime frame which are going to collide with each other and the two particles are identical so they have both of them have same mass so take them mass as m prime both of them and both of them have the same velocity that is u prime to each other so that is minus u prime so after collision the velocity of the combined particle would be zero because they would be at rest but for an observer of s frame this case will not be same to him the mass m prime that is first mass would be like m1 and second mass would be like m2 and to him the velocity of the first mass be like e1 in this direction so with the e1 and velocity of the second mass would be q2 in this direction so after collision the this product will be not at rest so they have a velocity v that is the velocity of the s prime frame okay so that is v now we have to consider the conservation of momentum that is from the conservation of momentum in s prime frame that is from the moving frame we get momentum before collision that is m prime u prime minus m prime u prime equals to zero and for s frame the conservation would like momentum before collision is m1 u1 plus m2 u2 and after collision that is m1 plus m2 into velocity v that is the velocity of the moving frame s prime okay now we take this as equation number one now from the velocity addition theorem of einstein we get by this theorem we can get the value of u1 and u2 for this frame so that is like u1 that's equal to u prime plus v by 1 plus u prime v by c square okay and similarly for u2 that should be minus u prime plus v by 1 minus u prime v by c square okay now take this term u prime v by c square as x so for this we get u1 equal to u prime v plus by 1 plus x similarly for u2 we get minus u prime plus v by 1 minus x because we considered that x equal to u prime v by c square okay now using this value of u1 and u2 in equation 1 we can get like this so put this value of u1 and u2 in equation 1 and from this we get that is m1 into value of u1 that is u prime plus v by 1 plus x plus m2 into the value of u2 that is u minus u prime plus v by 1 minus u prime v by c square that is x and that is equal to m1 plus m2 into v okay and after multiplying this v we get m1 v plus m2 v now take all the m1 terms to the left side and all the m2 terms to the right side 
so after that we get like this take m1 common so we get okay that's equal to m2 to the right side v minus minus u prime plus v by 1 minus x okay now we have to just simplify this that is m1 into 1 plus x u prime plus v minus v minus vx that's equal to m2 into v that is 1 minus x into v minus vx plus u prime minus v okay now this v and this v cancelled out and this v this v cancelled out so we get that is m1 into u prime minus vx by 1 plus x that's equal to m2 into u prime minus vx by 1 minus x now this term and this term are similar so they are cancelled out so remaining terms m1 by 1 plus x that's equal to m2 by 1 minus x and from this m1 by m2 have the value 1 plus x by 1 minus x and we take this equation as equation number 2 ok now go to our this consideration that is u1 equal to u prime plus v by 1 plus x so u1 that is u prime plus v by 1 plus x now take square on both side so we get u1 square equal to u prime plus v by 1 plus x whole square so that's equal to after using the formula of square we get like this by 1 plus twice x plus x square now subtract c square from this term u1 square so that is u1 square minus c square that's equal to u1 u prime square plus v square plus 2 u prime v by minus c square after subtracting this will be like this okay by this term now go to our previous consideration for x so we considered that the value of x that is u prime v by c square so from this we get that c square x that is equal to u prime v now so we can say c square x equal to u prime v now using this we can say that this term c square x is equal to this term u prime v so these two ca terms cancelled out so the remaining terms will be u prime square plus v square minus c square minus c square x square that is this term by we can write this term as whole square of 1 plus x so 1 plus x whole square thus we get the value of u1 square minus c square and similarly we can get the value of u2 square minus c square so using this on similar case we get that u2 square minus c square that is equal to similar calculation and after this we would get like so 1 minus x whole square into u1 prime square plus v square minus c square minus c square x square ok thus we get u1 square minus c square and u2 square minus c square now divide these two terms that is u1 square minus c square with this term that is u2 square minus c square we get the value of u1 square minus c square before and we put this value that was like u prime square plus v square minus c square minus c square x square by 1 plus x whole square and we get the value of u2 square minus c square that is this value this so put this value and we get
by 1 minus x whole square and you can see this these two terms are same so they are cancelled so remaining terms are 1 minus x whole square by 1 plus x whole square okay now if we take inverse of these terms just take inverse of this term so we get 1 plus x whole square by 1 minus x whole square that's equal to u2 minus c square by u1 minus c square now divide these terms with c square so divide these terms with c square and we get that is u2 square minus c square by c square divided by u1 square minus c square by c square okay after division we get that is equal to u2 square by c square minus 1 by u1 square by c square minus 1 now if you take minus 1 common from both of them then you get minus of 1 minus u2 square by c square by minus of 1 minus e1 square by c square and this minus and minus cancelled out so they cancelled so remaining terms 1 minus u2 square by c square and by 1 minus u1 square by c square and from this if we take square root on both side of this equation then we get that is 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x that's equal to square root of 1 minus u2 square by c square by square root of 1 minus u1 square by c square okay and in equation 2 we have already got the value of 1 plus x by 1 minus x of this value so from equation 2 we can see that this value is m1 by m2 that is 1 plus x by 1 minus x so using this equation 2 we can get that this is equal to m1 by m2 so put this value that is m1 by m2 so from this if we multiply this term with this term and this term with this term then we get m2 into root over 1 minus u2 square by c square that's equal to m1 into root over that is square root 1 minus u1 square by c square you can see that the product of mass m2 mm, that is mass and this term similarly the mass and this term is same so that is a constant term so we can say that product of mass into root over 1 minus velocity square by c square is a constant term so that is a constant and we take this constant as m0 that is the rest mass of the particle from its frame frame so that is m0 and from this we get that the value of m that equals to m0 by root over square root of 1 minus u square by c square thus we get the expression of relativistic mass that is m equal to m0 by root over 1 minus u square by c square okay